What is going on, IF Warriors? So today we're going to talk about a new research or a new study that is being presented. It was presented in the uh, the European Nutrition Conference. So we don't have the actual detail of the study, uh, but we do have a person who went there and reported on it uh, from the website everydayhealth.com. Uh, so this person who, who reported on it was Don Roth, um, and he talked about a few interesting aspects of this intermittent fasting study. Now, yes, it is 10 hours of fasting um, and 14 hours uh, of eating. I'm sorry, 14 hours of fasting and 10 hours of of eating, which is less than what we're used to uh, in terms of, for example, the 16-8, right? So this is the this is the 14-10, um, as opposed to, you know, 16-8, 24, 20 hours of eating, four hours of uh, fasting. Uh, but it was still interesting to see because a big, big, big positive thing was done to construct this uh, this study, and we're going to take a look at that real quickly. Uh, and the results, of course, were uh, were very, very good. So let's go ahead and uh, switch over, uh, so we could go ahead and talk about that uh, that research finding. Okay, here you will see the big important thing is that it was done in the wild, as 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 in people were free living and doing intermittent fasting, but also there were thirty seven thousand participants that is a large large sample size um and it's a very good number because granted it's not going to be detailed in terms of the rigor um it's not going to be like the other study that we recently talked about where they were in a metabolic chamber that's super expensive because they can't go home they're stuck there but you're reading all of their energy expenditures as it happens live uh right so that that's different because it's super rigorous, but because it's super rigorous, it's less participants. This is less rigorous, but it shows how it would work in free living and a big sample size of 37,000 people. Very, very powerful. So this study, which involved more than 37,000 people, found that hunger, mood, and sleep can all improve with a daily schedule of fasting for 14 hours under this type of plan. For example, a person might take a first bite at 9 a.m. and then finish eating for the day by 7 p.m. Now, one thing that they found here, and, and as I mentioned, it was presented uh, this week in the European Nutrition Conference. So, as I mentioned before many times, uh, don't stagger your eating windows. Always don't vary your eating windows. Always keep them the same. If you take your first bite at 9 a.m. and then you end at 7 p.m., try to always take your first bite at 9 a.m. and end at 7 p.m. Uh, because if you stagger it, if you vary it, uh, there isn't a consistent amount of time that you're fasting. And you, might cut, and you might cut yourself short one day and then maybe enhance a little bit the next day, but there's an inconsistency there. So you're gonna, the inconsistency is going to reciprocate itself in the results as well. But I do have one negative comment to the to this study. But let's let's take a look at the other stuff that I've highlighted here. Now, another uh, thing that we that that's important of the thirty seven thousand people, and technically it's thirty seven thousand five hundred fifty four of the thirty seven thousand five hundred fifty four people, more than ninety six percent, and they will tell you out there, oh. This is impossible to do. This is, you're going to be hungry all the time. They tell you this all the time. But anyone who, who's done intermittent fasting for a good amount of time knows that the, the that after a week or two, your body adjusts, your body's acclimated to fasting, and your body actually doesn't get hungry until your eating window opens and then stops being hungry when your eating window closes. Anyone who's actually done it, only from the people from the outside looking in that's not tried it or tried it one day or two days, they can say that because that's how they feel thinking about going through that process without actually understanding that their body will actually adjust. But look at this. Of the 37,554 people, large, massive sample size, 96% opted in for additional weeks of an intermittent fasting plan. 
they could have ended it. They did their due diligence. They, well, they did their duty and they were done and they asked for more. They opted in. It was an opt in because they wanted to see how many people actually like it. They opted basically the entire group, 96%. And there was over 70% that were classified as highly engaged, meaning they regularly logged in and completed their questionnaires on their app. So it was an app that they're, they were constantly using every day. <laughs> the scientists observed that those who follow the 14 hour intermittent fasting plan over a longer period reported higher energy, better mood, improved sleep and lower hunger. That's the thing that people don't tell you. They pretend Hey, you know what? If I was to fast, which I never will, I would feel so hungry just thinking about it. Like I skipped a meal or two once and I was like ravenously hungry. Yeah, sure. Because your body is used to consistently eating. The moment you change your body's flow, rhythm, habit, you start to go into that flow, rhythm, and habit. You don't become hungry. Trust me. Ask anybody. For anybody watching this video has never done intermittent fasting and fears the the feeling of feeling the, the 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 feeling of hunger that will take over them through the process in the beginning sure after a week or two that quickly after a week or two you'll start to feel you wouldn't even sometimes you'll forget to start eating it during your eating window when it opens up that's how adjusted your body gets to the process of intermittent fasting and really the ironic thing about this is that people who eat consistently where there is no fasting at all they tend to report hunger more report having an appetite more than those who do intermittent fasting why because they're consistently always eating their body wants to eat ghrelin is shooting up hormone hormone your, your leptin is is reduced right? So that you could eat more. So those who don't do intermittent fasting actually report higher hunger than those who do intermittent fasting. Go figure. But that's how the body works. It's never a black and white thing. Well, if I'm not eating, I must be hungry. And if I am eating all the time, I must not be hungry. That's not how it works. Your body actually adjusts. And because you're eating all the time, you end up actually being more hungry. <laughs> Let's go down here. Okay, so they also talked about, the, the researchers here, um, they talked about counting calories every day is really hard and it can be really cumbersome, uh, saying uh, Dr. Vidmar says this. The, uh, this study highlights that time-restricted eating might just be a more simple approach for some groups of people. Nobody talks about the convenience factor of this as well. One thing that I always say when people go, oh, intermittent fasting, uh, the reason it works so well is because, you know, you, you're not eating. So, duh, it's going to work. Yeah, that's the point. But you're creating structure to not eat as opposed to never having structure. You could easily graze. And uh, studies have shown that people under report by over 50 percent how much they're actually consuming throughout the day. People forget the things that they eat while they're in a car. People for people tend to forget snacks that they eat. People tend to forget little things that somebody gives them or nuts that they grab from a from from a counter or when they lick the, the knife of when they're making peanut butter or something. People forget over the course of the day if they don't have structure, right? Intermittent fasting provides that structure. So even with the calorie consumption portion and there's more that helps in, in other areas like body fat but even with just the calorie consumption portion it helps you maintain that and control that because you don't graze throughout the day she further suggests that intermittent fasting by its nature may reduce calorie intake by limiting the window during which the person eats this type of eating plan may also help the body's metabolic system utilizing its calories more efficiently so things like glucose insulin cortisol and other hormones may be at their most optimal alignment and that's something that i've always said here on uh Fledge fitness is hormonally you're working for yourself as opposed to working against yourself your ghrelin is going to go down. Your leptin is going to go up. Leptin lets you know when you're full. It doesn't delay 
telling you that you're full. Thus, you eat less, right? You get full, you get the signal quicker, you eat less as opposed to you get full. And then it takes a while for your body to send that signal that you're that you're full. But so many things are happening. It's controlling your insulin. It's making you more insulin sensitive than insulin um, than insulin resistant. <clears throat> All of that stuff helps with moving body fat uh, away uh, out of the body. Now, one thing that I will say, they talked about uh, there was eight out of ten of those highly engaged of the seventy percent that were highly engaged were female, uh, with a with a uh, average age of sixty and a body mass index of 25.6 so it's important to understand that that was the 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 majority of that that group um but they also talked about weight loss here Let's see if i could find it here they talked about weight loss and, and i will say this the weight loss was not insane right Gr granted you you uh there was weight loss there um here we go. Overall, just over half of highly engaged users reported a small reduction in weight over two to 16 weeks, an average of almost two and a half pounds, right? So a small reduction in weight. And this is really because although you're getting other benefits that come with being in some sort of a fasted state, normally it takes eight hours to go to be in a post absorptive state from the moment that you start eating. So 14 hours is going to get you into that post absorptive state. But then for the metabolic switch over where you're consistently tackling, um, you know, body fat and transforming that right, uh, transforming that into ketone bodies to provide your body with the glucose replacement, which is ketones that tends to take sometimes t up to 12 hours, right? 12 13 hours even sometimes 14 hours right so if it's taking that long to get there and you're only fasting for 14 hours you might just be in a metabolic switchover for about two hours so you're not getting the most out of it you're still losing weight overall but you're not getting the most out of it and that's one of the things why although this might be good for <clears throat> calorie control and all that stuff the additional benefits that come with intermittent fasting, the hormonal benefits, the benefits where you are taking fat and turning it into ketones, which means that you're actually, uh, <clears throat> the, the calorie partitioning is in your favor. Instead of burning muscle, you're burning body fat, right? Instead of burning glucose, since you've burned through glucose already, or glycogen, since you've burned through that, you're burning body fat. So it's very important to understand that you know, intermittent fasting when done with minimum, in my opinion, 16 hours or more, you're really tapping into that. You're really tapping into you know the 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 body fat specifically, which is what people want to do. They want to lose body fat. So I don't agree with 10 hours of of uh, of eating with a 14 hour fast. I think the 16 hours should be the minimum. Um, because you want to at least get some benefits from that, you know, metabolic switch over. But it does show a lot of positive things in a large group of people who are restricting themselves from eating throughout the day. It shows positive things as as in them being wanting to do more of it. 96% of them wanting to do more of it. Their sleep improving, right? Their mood improving. Uh, their hunger is improving is lowering and their energy is higher all the things that people will fear monger you into believing won't happen you'll be ir irritable so not a better mood you'll be tired so not higher energy you won't be able to sleep well so not improve sleep and you will be hungry so not lower hunger right it's all the opposite don't fall into these traps whenever they do studies and they do intermittent fasting and caloric restriction the intermittent fasting group reports less hunger than the constantly eating group think about that think about that it's not black and white it's what your body is what your body signals you and that's all hormonal and intermittent fasting helps create more hormonal balance than just consistently eating. So it's still a good study to look at what happens when you create some sort of time restriction of eating, but I do not recommend 
to do 10 hours of eating, 14 hours of fasting, because I just think it's too low of a number uh, in terms of the fasting time frame. I think 16 is the minimum so that you can get some benefits that, that come with that metabolic switch over. So hopefully this video has uh, helped you guys. Um, I thought this was fascinating. 37,545 people in a study for intermittent fasting is just a really good sample size. And seeing that 96% of them opted in to more weeks of intermittent fasting just shows how easy it is to get into the flow of intermittent fasting once you overcome that hurdle, that initial one week, two week hurdle. Until the next one, guys, peace out.